First things first, how yes. are you? I'm doing great. Okay. Everything's awesome. Uh, what I want to start with is um, you were born in uh, Washington. Yeah, near near Washington. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it was a suburb called it's still there, but <laughs> it's it's called Columbia uh, in the state of Maryland. Do you have a, a first musical memory from 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 very early on? Um, I think I found this. I found like one of Dion Warwick's like cassette tapes, and I like became like obsessed with it, and I just kept playing it over and over and like slowing down the speed. Or it, and it, I mean, it's just the, the most random musical memory, but I, I just remember doing that. If, if you look back now, what was it about Dionne Warwick that struck you? I, see, I, I don't think it was anything about okay. Dionne Warwick, even though she's incredible. Mm -hmm. I think it was just, I, uh, I was just working with whatever was there. And I, I just remember she had like a song on there that I just really got obsessed with and just kept playing over and over again. Was but. musical uh, a big thing growing up? No, not really for me. I. I uh, um, don't. I mean, my parents are aren't really that musical, um, but they're extremely supportive, and they've always, you know, supported everything that I've, I've done. Um, but it was just kind of like I, I've always been like the, the quiet kid, and um, really reserved. And I think that I just needed some kind of outlet to let out things that I would never actually, you know, say to my friends or family or whatever. And so it just happened to be music that was there. Did you start them by writing, uh, putting thoughts to paper, or did you start singing? Yeah, well, it was kind of like, uh, yeah, it was just, I, I would, uh, I had like a, a little like mic that plugged into the computer, okay. and I was, I would just kind of mess around um, on that. And mostly it was just, I, I felt like there was more of a release when I was creating it and like writing it, even though it sounded horrible, it was the worst music ever made. Sure. It uh, it did something for me, and it, it made me not want to. What what's that do for you? I think it it gave me a. Um, I don't know. I think it's just like a like you know those little like balls with the lightning that you can like touch, and there's yeah. like lightning. It's just like you have that, and it's just on for so long, and it heats up. Like eventually, the glass just needed to be shattered, you know, and then that would just happen so often. Like I just needed something to get out all of the thoughts that were in my head. Um, and I would just, I mean, I'd be awake all night just thinking about you know, tons of different things and I needed to have some way to express it and that was just the only way that worked for me. That gave me some kind of release. And, and you say that, uh, well, you call it the worst music ever made? Uh, oh yeah, it was, it was terrible. Do you still have recordings of that time? It, it, the thing is, I'm young, it sucks because I'm young enough to where when I was like 12 or 13, that was still in my email. Okay. So I can go back like, 10 years in my email and, and listen to some of that stuff, but it was terrible. Because if you listen to, to what you made back then, could you already hear what you wanted to do in your mind, but maybe not did not have the technical ability to do? Uh, yeah, I think so. Of, of, I think so, yeah. But I don't think there was any indication with those recordings that you would have anyone with any kind of talent <laughs> at all. <laughs> but I could definitely think about what I was trying to do, for sure. When then did you think that you had a good voice. Wait, was, was there a moment when you realized you you could do it? Like last six months ago, <laughs> last year. Okay. I'm just I was so used to always growing up d doing it, but knowing that nobody is gonna think that I am great at it. You know, it's just such a. I'm so used to that. You know, that I almost just didn't. It was almost irrelevant to me. After why why that mentality that that it wasn't good enough that. Uh, well, it's weird because I, I actually feel like it, personally it was good enough for me because I was making it for me to evolve as a person. And every time that I would write these things out, whether people heard it or not, it would do something for me and it would help me grow. And so that was what I was focused on. Um, and I guess that's probably why I didn't, I didn't ever just decide to stop because I, because many people would listen to that stuff and be like, yeah, you should never try to, you should just stop. But it, that only works if you're arguing for, you know, oh, my goal is to make everybody love everything that I do. And I just don't really care about that. It's more, I'm just trying to make sense of the thoughts that I have, you know, myself. When then, because I, I saw a video of you on YouTube where, where they discuss your work ethic and then kind of the dream of uh, becoming a musician. So when was the dream born then to, to 
to make a livelihood, so to say, out of it. But was there a point where you thought, okay, I, I can do this, I have to... Yeah, there was a point in that, I think that was the video with like some of my college professors. And sure, yeah, yeah. I think in college, there was a lot of pressure from your peers who are the quintessential, like, gotta make it type of artist. And so mm -hmm. I think that I did succumb to some of that pressure. Um, and just New York in general, it's a city that makes you, you know, suicidal almost okay. if you're not, not serious, not honestly, but like, it makes you feel like you need to have every second of your day filled. Mm. Otherwise, there's no point. And that's like the mentality. And I just disagreed with that whole thing after a while, but I did like fall into that mm. for a while. So um, I think that there was, you know, there were moments where I felt like I had to make this into something. Um, and then, you know, of course, I graduated a year early, so there was a, a moment where literally I was just in New York by myself, like, and I had to do something. And that was, you know, that was just what I did, so. Can you take me through one of those moments in New York then? Because, well, you've, you've spoken about that you didn't f felt like uh, New York, you, you fitted to, to New York, or that New York was a good fit? Yeah, I, it, it's, uh, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, you're, you're always at the mercy of, of somebody else. You, you can't really, like I used to, there's this island like called Staten Island that is like one of the boroughs and it's like not, like everyone hates on it. Everyone is like, this is the worst place. But to me, it was just the greatest because I could take a ferry over there and I could like go to the mall area and just like sit in the grass and like pretend that like I, had free will of some sort but then you would always look back and you would see like a little bit of the new york skyline and you it would be like reminding yourself oh it's like if you're in a, in a in prison and you get to do community service for a day like you're not free you know so i just it felt like so confining and constricting and it felt like somebody else was like kind of puppeteering your whole environment and your whole experience but in los angeles you get in your car, you're alone. You can literally drive anywhere. You can do anything, you know? And I just didn't have that same feeling of freedom. So what kind of effect did moving to LA have on your, on your music, on your writing? I think that um, there was like a little bit of experimentation in New York where I just tried to be as honest as I possibly could, um, taking the feeling of like evolving and growing as a human being and doing things for myself. Um, to like the next level and just really focusing on like where am I going to be, where am I at the beginning of this project, where am I going to be at the end of the project. Mm -hmm. I think Los Angeles regaining my sense of control and putting myself back into the driver's seat of basically my life made me feel like I should dig even deeper and go even further and try to be even more honest and try to get to the root of like whatever issue is, you know, bothering me at any given moment. And that's what I did for my latest album called Ology. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really focus on, okay, this is how I feel at the beginning, this is how I'm going to feel at the end. And I just really wanted to dig deep and almost do like, it was just self-therapy, you know, like right. just my own, my own shrink. The, 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 whole time. Very, the way you speak about it, it sounds very cathartic to you. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. So, and you mentioned that early on this, this was already there, that you kind of wanted to get thoughts out. And, and so does it, does it help in, in a way? Does it, does it make you understand certain things about yourself? Better? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm a completely different person okay. now than I was a year ago when I was, you know, working on the project. Um, well, can you tell me one thing that, that you've learned then in, the, in the past year or, or how you've changed a little bit? Uh, I started to see the walls that I just like build in front of me to everyone, you know, and I just like really through that process they got like more and more dense and I think they were just invisible to me before and I, but they were still there and really strong and I've just slowly been able to like take each brick and out individually because I can see it now, you know, and so that that's something that's transformed my life uh, immensely and then I think even before that, you know, I had walls internally just like certain areas of you know myself like blocking one part of my brain off from the other part it's just things that just don't make any sense um, that I was able to like really work through uh, and change and I'm sure that there are countless other issues and, and you know, these aren't specific either like everyone deals with this stuff but it's just like you know um, self-improvement is just such a huge part of 
improving the quality of your life. And uh, for me, it just is, you know, it's like a no-brainer. It's the most important thing that I should be focusing all my energy on.